Hello everyone, I wanted to start off with a little bit of uh, Game Update 13 review. Um, it just came out a little bit ago, and um, there's quite a few different changes that have been implemented recently. Um, I just want to go over a few things on TR side, at least in uh, VR, so people know what they're working with in the new update. Um, first thing first is uh, the new NS7 PW. Um, overall, I think the damage that comes out of this gun is a little bit less than is anticipated. Um, it, it has amazing sustainability. Uh, it has amazing range. Um, it's neutral, so the the, the uh, tracers coming out of it are going to be, I believe, white. Um, so it's difficult to tell who's firing it. Um, very nice weapon overall, but uh, I say the biggest advantage you're going to get out of it is purchasing it. We'll give it to you on all three factions if you buy it with station cash. Um, also here, you can see in the background here on my character model, is uh, we have the new Grayscales camo in the game for early access. Uh, that will be available to non-premium members hopefully soon. Um, unfortunately, the black one is by referral only, so if you're expecting to get that, uh, this is about the best you're going to get from what I've been able to tell. Um, so with this uh, little uh, SMG here, it's pretty good from the hip. It does pretty good damage. Uh, the big thing this nice about it, I guess, is the fire rate and the range of effectiveness. I've got a uh, forward grip on this thing, no compensator or anything, and downrange targets I can just outright nail without pretty much any problem at all. And this is standing up. So, overall, solid weapon. Pretty good. Um, however, the T or TS2 Inquisitor, the new pistol for TR, um, I thought this thing was going to be a full automatic pistol, but apparently it is not. Um, this is actually a 30 round magazine um, standard fire pistol, uh, semi automatic. It's not bad overall. I mean, I, I guess maybe it's a better solution than the Emperor. Um, it seems to do okay at range, but I, I, I don't understand the point of this pistol. I really don't. I mean, the Repeater is a better option uh, for close range combat, the Commissioner is a better, you know, long range option. If you're looking for in between, go with either the. Uh, Emperor for the little bit of extra range over the repeater, um, or pick up the uh, the underboss because it does great. Other than that, um, there's been some pretty significant changes to a few things out here. Um, the Vulcan has been reworked a little bit. Um, it now focuses a little bit better on taking out uh, vehicles and infantry. Um, quite a bit of an increase against Sunders as well, and. Um, the thing that is bad about it is that it doesn't shoot down aircraft as well. Now, a lot of people will complain about that, um, that, you know, the aircraft were being drilled by it and everything like that. Well, I can understand it was a little bit too good on that. As far as infantry go, uh, against non-nano weave, you're going to take about five shots to kill somebody. So your standard dickweed is going to be one, two, three, four, five. And he's out of there. Maxes in general take about 23 shots to drop. So if you got a good spray, you can get them. Um, other than that, this weapon excels against uh, tanks still and Sunderers. Um, against aircraft, you're looking, I think, about 27 shots to take out. Um, it'll still spray them pretty good, but it's no longer the dominant kill weapon. Um, I believe a Liberator takes around 68 shots to take out, and a Galaxy is around, like, I don't know, 180, I believe. So, against aircraft, it has been significantly reduced. Um, it did gain some infantry fighting power, which is probably better for it. And, of course, against uh, your typical tank, if you get up with the uh, surprise butt sex, um, you can hose them down and take them out in a magazine if you have the extended mag, which in VR I do. Well, I do normally anyways. Um, other than that, it still hoses harassers pretty good. This is a harasser right here that does not have composite. Without a mag. Um, you need the extended really to pull it off. Sunders, it's about I think two mags to take one out. Let me toes one here and we'll find out. Um, and da -da 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 so a little bit of smoke after the first mag, uh, fully extended. The second one just gets it, just barely, and that's two extended magazines. So. Um, that's what you're looking at with the Vulcan. Uh, it does have a little bit better capability of aiming up close, so you can actually nail people who are right next to the vehicle, and it can get them pretty good. 
Now, other than that, this patch is all about the ESF, the Empire-specific fighter. Um, with the Terran Republic one, you have changes to the rotary. Um, there's also changes to the other uh, two weapons that are available, the Banshee and the Needler. Um, each one seems to have its own role now, and I kind of want to showcase them a little bit. I'm not going to go in extreme depth, because I do want to cover a little bit of the other things that are out there. But the M18 Rotary right here is kind of your catch-all weapon. I'd say it's probably the best overall at fighting armor. Um, keep in mind, I'm no pilot, so I kind of suck at this shit. So if you don't like it, too bad. Um, as far as taking out aircraft, it can hose them pretty good. You can actually get a, a pretty good piece of reaver and take it out in one mag. Um, and that's across the board. All three factions can do that. Uh, this weapon, however, is more for fighting, I'd say, all types of targets. You can hit infantry pretty good if you can manage to get them. Um, it does hose harassers pretty well. You see I set it on fire with that, and there it goes. Uh, as far as aircraft goes, the damage is not too bad. I mean, you can you can trash a liberator and everything pretty good. Let's see you couple mags to take out a lib, no problem. Rocket pods and everything are unchanged, um, but there will be some lock-on changes in the future from what I'm aware of. And this weapon overall is pretty good at taking out tanks, but it still takes like three or four magazines, if not five, to take one out, so don't expect to be like, you know, the king of the, the ground with this weapon system. It's just kind of the intermediate, it's good at everything, but you're going to be reloading off. Now, other than that, we have the additional changes to the Needler, which is TR stock gun. Uh, the magazine can be increased pretty good on the Needler. Um, we'll just get zoom optics and the capacity, and we're going to spawn another mosquito. Alright, with uh, default, I think you're looking at 75 rounds. If you get maximum here, you have 85 rounds in this son of a bitch. Um, damage has been mitigated over time, so it's more of a DPS weapon than a burst weapon, but allows you to seriously open up on somebody, and it'll kill them outright. You can continue holding the trigger and pull it until it goes click if you want to, because you have plenty of rounds to miss your target. Um, as far as attacking ground targets, I mean, it, it'll still kill infantry and everything. As far as tanks go, it's decent. This is probably your premier anti-air weapon. Um, I'm not sure how bad it trashes a live, but I'm going to imagine it's pretty good. There we go. A little over half. Uh, of course, that guy wasted it with his face, but, I mean, that's what he's doing out here is just playing around. So, um, regardless, this is a solid uh, AA weapon. This is your premier anti-air weapon, so if you want to fight aircraft, that's what you want to use. Now, also, uh, we have the Banshee. Um, the Banshee still kind of fills this role as the anti-ground weapon. Um, with this, I'll just slap on thermal so we can show it off a little bit. It, I usually use zoom on most of my weapons on aircraft just because I like to be able to look around. Um, this weapon has 40 rounds in it with everything extended and everything. Um, still does its job at hosing infantry. So if you find yourself some infantry, you will slaughter the shit out of them without even hitting them, really, because you just pretty much have to splash the area in which they're in, which makes it a good spam weapon. Um, against aircraft, though, and everything, you're going to be struggling by comparison, because look at the spray here. I mean, that is, like, all over the place. So, you can still trash aircraft, I believe. Yeah, it does fine against them if you can get a hold of them, but good luck landing that, and you really don't have the mag to fence one off straight up. So this weapon is more of an anti-infantry weapon. Against ground targets, well... <laughs> it doesn't do too well at all. This is this is an infantry farming weapon. If you're going for ground, you can stack this with you know your classic wall pod. So if that's what you want to do, that's totally an option. Now I do want to show off a little bit of the other changes out here, so I'm not going to dwell on the mosquito. Probably the biggest change that everyone is going to notice if you play this game frequently is that Ezimir has changed. Um, Azimir has been completely overhauled here, and we're talking to the point where, well, it doesn't look like it used to. They added obstacles, they added trees, they added hills, the base design has been completely revamped, the lattice has been implemented, um, it's now Indar Part 2, The Revenge. Um, so let me grab your basic setup here, I'll just go Heavy Assault, and uh, that's fine, whatever. Alright, so, let's take a look here real quick at the map, and we'll see what we're working with. 
Okay, so as we see here, um, this has kind of been what's been happening with with this uh, particular continent so far. The lattice kind of really restricts how you can come at the central area. So you can pretty much block any advance, and so far at least with all the factions putting up relatively equal population, this is where the fight is, Issa Tech Plant. And it's, it's just been like that. It's been back and forth all night, and nobody has been able to hold this place. And that's particularly interesting because most of the terrain around here just it, it's not as good as it should be. You can attack directly into the plant from multiple sides of having basically a, a height advantage. Um, so this area is really indefensible. The tech plant is obviously the most valuable thing on the continent. There are no other tech plants as we can see here. Um, and of course the new base that's been implemented right here, the Octagon. Um, I fought in this earlier, and to tell you the truth, I wasn't too impressed with it, but of course that's me, and a lot of these new base designs are innovative, but they're dumb at the same time. Um, we see uh, there's a lot of breaches here in between the walls. They're, they're very small. Um, you're, you're not going to be really, really able to fit vehicles in here, and a lot of them, especially around the octagon here, we can see you have small entryways, so the only way to potentially attack these is through aircraft. And, of course, aircraft uh, will be suffering from dome shields eventually, so there will be air cover. Um, now, a lot of these walls here around these bases are not really defensible. We see the classic walls on the left-hand side that are usable. However, on the right-hand side of the base, those walls are so thin that you really can't even stand up there as a light assault. Um, there's a few places you can stop on them occasionally, the breakpoints where they change directions and such. But overall, these maps are very, I don't know farm happy. Um, with, with these small breaks in the armor, that's where the infantry tends to funnel. You know, or they try to go up to a turret interface. And at a turret location, I mean, you're getting farmed constantly because they can just spam that area and they'll hit everyone. Also, um, when you try to come through the area uh, in which the wall is broken, you're going to come out into a bunch of vehicles waiting to shoot your ass. And unfortunately, you're not going to be able to do much against them because you're popping out and they're waiting for you. And you don't have vehicles really to fight back against them. Um, some of the vehicle pads I've heard are, are even within inter enemy range. So, overall map design, they could have done some better options. I, I believe you should be able to stand on these walls to be able to provide fire to drive them back so you can actually get outside the base. As it stands right now, you can't get in. Or, I'm sorry, they can't get in and you can't get out. Um, the Octagon is an infantry paradise overall. This, it, it just amazes me at how many directions you can get shot from. Um, the common tactic appears to be park your Sunder right outside one of these gates and charge in. You can surround it with Sunders. Um, now, when I was there, all three factions were fighting over it. Uh, we got inside, the NC was defending, the VS got inside, and it turned into a massive three-way orgy. Eventually, the uh, NC built up enough defense that they were able to push us out, and it was very easy for them to do so because they could just hold the hallways and spam. Um, these tight corridors do not work well with infantry fights. In fact, there was you know roughly 30 guys that were just basically getting hit by explosives or just falling over dead. Um, and as far as for, from a defensive perspective, if you have the manpower, you're going to win. Um, now, I've heard other things of people saying that the spawns in these areas, which are, uh, apparently there are two that you can teleport between in the right-hand corner here, are uh, they're, they're a little too blocked by the walls from what the defenders have been saying. I haven't had a chance to defend, but I mean, I got my ass kicked out of there right quick. So, overall, that's what we're looking at base design. Uh, I want to redeploy here real quick and visit one of the bases so I can show off a little bit of what's been changed. Um, I'll try to make it brief, and after that, that will be pretty much your review of Game Update 13. Um, one last thing I do want to comment on is that uh, things have changed with, uh, w w with the Vanu. The Vanu have gained new sound effects. Um, I tested them out. In my opinion, they're a bit, a little too different than I would expect. Like, the, I guess they have more of a, a you know, a, an energy weapon type of sound to them. But in the midst of combat, they're very difficult to hear. I think they need to be boosted a little bit more so you can hear the faction um, and give, uh, give you know give you a reason to pick up a suppressor. So I think I'm around a standard tower here, which really ain't going to show us shit. So um, perhaps a bad spawn location on my part. But let's go jump down and 
get ourselves a vehicle so I can at least have a little tour de France. And let me set a waypoint to a map location that I do want to look at. Um, let's go to the Ease of Mining Operation. I'm pretty sure that's a new base design. And I'm just going to grab a candy ass flash. So hopefully I can navigate. Now we see the, the change in terrain already. Look how much more mountainside this is. Look how much more space there is that's taken up by hills. There's trees. There's rocks. There are, well, the Raxian rocks that are coming out. Um, in general, vehicle combat has been very restricted. It's very much like uh, Amorish or some parts of Indar, in which you really can't get around to. Um, and this is also the kind of hill you face where there's no scaling. You're not going to climb that. I mean, pretty much nothing is going to get up that hill. Now, here's one of your new base designs right here, and these are the wall types I'm talking about. There's small gaps here, which are easily targetable by vehicles, so they don't have to come in, but they're not going to get anywhere against you. They're just going to farm your ass, um, and you will not be able to get out. So, let's go ahead and head out one of them. And look, look at just the complete difference of this base. It, it used to be a small pit-like area. Now it's got way more obstacles in the way of everything. And here's your vehicle terminals that push you right outside of a shield, so they're at least blocked from the outside. Um, these bases are they're interesting and everything, but I really don't think they're going to help out with the fight too much. Um, so let's get out into the the open area, and I'll quit driving around Miss Daisy here. But I, I, again, a lot of the, the base designs are kind of confusing as to where you can and where you cannot go. Here's another instance of a, an interest of a base. I mean, if you're driving a vehicle, good luck. I mean, you're not going to be able to get through there, and if you do, you're going to be taken out by infantry in short order. So, again, if you're driving a vehicle, you're going to be camping this base and shooting. So I think I'm rolling into a fight here. I'm probably going to get my ass kicked because I'm really not set up to fight anything. Uh, looks like, uh, you know, let's just drive in here and get killed. Hi, guys. There we go. <laughs> At least I took someone with me. So overall, the, uh, the base design here has changed quite a bit. Um, the fight apparently is, you know, always going to be based around Hisa, it seems. It seems like this this is the focal point. This is where everyone's running into each other at the moment. I'm not sure if that's due to popularity or that's simply just due to, I don't know, the, the lanes not being set up correctly to provide more options. Either way, this is where your fight's at if you're coming to Esimir, so get ready for it. It's here to stay. Game Update 13's live, guys. Hopefully uh, it's more enjoyable than it has seemed so far. So, maybe I'm just being negative, but, you know, log in, give it your shot, see if you like it. I'm out. See ya.